All right, there we go. Uh, I think we're recording. Uh, can you guys let me know if you can hear me okay? Just uh, raise your hand or just send me a chat or something. Okay, good. Uh, all right, yeah, so let me know if you guys have any questions. So I, I hadn't really started because um, nobody had joined yet. So, I mean, I had been planning on going over the assignment three because I figured people would have questions on that and or the, the material for this week or quizzes. So, let's see, I got my dev box up here so I can bring up assignment three if we want to look at that. I've had a couple of people, I mean, definitely people are working on it, which is great. So I've been getting questions Monday, Tuesday, and today. i people trying to go through this. Uh, oh, um, yeah, I might accidentally have somebody's um, solution here. Yeah, better. Better fix that before I try to start working on it here. Let's see. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Assignments. All right, let's see if that builds and runs. I think even though I copied that from solutions, that was actually, I haven't, I haven't put my solution in there yet. So that's just my, the should be the same one that you all should have started with. So basically with a constructor and not much else on a destructor, yeah. All right, let's see if that builds. Yeah, no tests are uncommented, so there'll be no tests. So it was clean. And let's build Control Shift B. And then we'll run it. Oh, and let me bring up the assignment description too here. We'll get started with that. But yeah, as usual, feel free to, if you have some questions, if you're working on the assignment, you have some questions about things, I'll, I'll probably start by going over some of the questions I've received so far from people working on the assignment. Okay, so we're still building here, but let's... Uh, Let's look at the assignment description here. So, um, so, so far, um, I know I've had one person got hung up on this and, and I don't blame them. Um, you do have to, to pay, you know, um, close attention to some of the descriptions here sometimes. So, um, so starting with number three, uh, it really is critical that you, that you use reference parameters where um, where the assignment uh, says that you need to use reference parameters. So I think the first place that that uh, will that you'll run into that is for the max digits. Okay. So first, um, let's see, I built finally. Let's see if that let's see if that runs tests. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have any tests. So um, maybe, maybe I'll talk a little bit about reference parameters here while I'm waiting to see if anybody has a specific question. Um, so, you, so yeah, you do need to make certain that the parameter that you pass into your max digit is a reference parameter. 
Um, and I also know that for add, you need to pass in a reference. So it needs to also be a reference parameter. And also for add, you need to return a reference to a new large integer. So, so add is gonna be, have both a reference parameter as input um, and it's gonna be returning a, a large integer reference, all right? So um, I didn't talk about returning a reference from a function, um, which I realized that maybe I should have. Uh, so back in like week one, we talked a little bit about functions and reference parameters. So this week was all about you know, dynamic memory and pointers, um, um, using pointers and things. So, so yeah, if you, have, if you guys have questions about that stuff, you know, uh, ask away. But, um, but yeah, at the moment I'm, t I'm thinking about reference parameters. So, so for example, let's see if this builds here. Um, So yeah, to run these, to run these, uh, yeah, you do have to run them by hand, kind of. So you have to get into a terminal if you want to run this stuff. So like, if I want to run these examples, we have to change into the examples directory um, and so if I want to run this first one, I should be able to run that. Okay, so. So just as a review of reference parameters here, um, I know I had a couple of functions where we did some examples of, so, you know, so, so normally when you pass in just a regular parameter, it's passed by value, right? So that means a copy of it is made. Um, so, so it doesn't matter if you actually change those parameters in size. I think that was the purpose of this change the value parameters um, function. And then we had to change the reference parameter function um, in this week's thing. So, so if you look through here, uh, where we call that, so, so you know, if we create some our local variables, val param one, val param two, val param three, and we pass uh, those into the change the value parameters function, um, so, I mean, these started off as values 5, 7, and 9.9, .9, and when we display them afterwards, they're still 5, 7, and 9.9, .9, even though, you know, if you go look in that function, um, that, that we change all those, okay? Because again, you know, when, when you pass by value, which is the default, it makes a copy of these, so, so you're not actually changing the original parameter in our main function, um, or, or the the original variable. We're just playing with copies or using copies of the values here. And, and, and so it doesn't matter after we return from this function um, um, if we change those, right? So, but if you pass something by reference, that's not the case, right? So for this other one, we've got a, a character and a Boolean that we pass in. Um, and I guess if I remember right, we pass both of these in by reference. Um, so the, the, the syntax for a reference parameter, which you have to use to make, you know, to make your parameters reference parameters um, in this assignment, uh, like for the max digits, is uh, you put an ampersand there. Reference parameters are related to, um, to pointers, actually, what you're learning about this week. So this is kind of a good, um, a good uh, uh, time to kind of uh, review reference parameters here, because basically when you pass in something by reference like this, you, you're actually passing in the memory address, okay? So instead of making a copy of the value, this tells C and C++, you, you can, um, uh, now this is, this is a C++ thing, so you really can't do reference parameters like this in plain C, if I'm, if I'm remembering right. So this was kind of a new thing that was added to the C++ language, so. So anyway, in C++, um, by, by doing that ampersand, and, and notice this is the same operator as the address of operator, okay? Because you're doing a similar thing. So, so when you make something, a reference parameter like this, you're telling it that I wanna pass in the address of the variable that's gonna be passed in here. And so since you're doing stuff with the, 
the, the pointer to the same address, if you make changes to a reference parameter, uh, those changes will be seen when you return back to the caller, all right? So yeah, I mean, here we change both of these. Uh, we, we change the character to be Y from whatever it was, and we change the Boolean variable, the Boolean parameter to be false, right? So, um, So um, to have a better way to go back and forth between these, I should probably split this so I could have both the function and the, the main function here at the same time. But um, um, so yeah, so it was X and true, but we changed it to Y and false um, for these reference parameters. And so after we return from the caller, it's, it's going to be actually, you know, because we're passing in the address of these basically. So, so when we make those changes, we're gonna be changing the value at the same address where this variable is, ref param one and ref param two. So, you know, again, the, the, the result is, is that uh, it's, it's actually changed. So, so we get Y here when we output ref param one and we get tr um, false instead of true um, when we do ref param two here, all right? So, um, so yeah, I should probably go back and, and uh, change this example, um, just thinking about this assignment here, because, um, so I don't talk, I don't talk about returning a reference um, as, a, so, so returning a reference value as a result from a function. Um, and um, uh, if you Google that, you'll, you'll probably find some examples. So there's some reasons why we want to do this. We might want to do this. Um, so. Um, so like um, for your add function, we need to be returning one of these large integer objects that you create, okay? So, so you need to dynamically create it and then return it. Um, and, and there's two ways that we could have done that. We could have returned a pointer or we could, turn, we could return a reference. Um, so it's more normal in C++. So in C, you have to return a pointer if you dynamically allocate something inside of a function and then you want to return that that new memory that was allocated back to the caller of your function. You, you return a pointer, right? And, and then the, 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 the caller is expecting a pointer variable to be returned. So you, you get basically the same effect in C++ by dynamically creating it like we normally do. So using the new function to create a new large integer. But then uh, if we return a reference, you can return back the actual dereferenced large integer that we dynamically create. And then in that way, um, your caller will be using the object that you actually create in your add function. So, um, so let me give kind of an example. So we're gonna, we're gonna be re using once or twice more returning um, a reference to, to, from a function for different things. So you'd have to be careful. So when you're talking about just regular variable, simple variables, simple data types, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to return a reference. So um, maybe I'll make just a new function here. Let's, let's, let's make a new function uh, to illustrate this. So we'll make an example of returning um, a reference from a function. So this is, re is going to return, um, let's have it return a reference to an int. Give it a name. Need to. I want to return not not a simple int, but a reference to an int. So you say int and an int um, and <laughs> um, to say that I'm returning an int integer reference. Um, uh, I'm not passing anything at the moment. So um, so for one thing, uh, for if you're talking about a simple variable, simple uh, type. Uh, you, you got to be careful. You can't return like a local variable because the local variable is actually destroyed. It goes out of scope. So if, if you try and do something like this, 
Um, might not even compile, so let's try and compile that. Didn't really mean to clean all that. Um, so, so yeah, so, so when it tries to compile this function, um, we get an error that reference to local variable x is returned, okay? So, so you normally can't return a simple variable like this. But uh, we can dynamically allocate something and return it, right? Because, because you, again, a, a local variable like, like this is only valid. You have to understand what we mean by the scope of a variable that we've talked about a couple of times here. It's only valid inside of this function when you declare a variable like this. And when the, when the function returns, that variable is actually destroyed. So x is actually destroyed. So that, I mean, that's one of the reasons for dynamic memory allocation. So um, I could create this dynamically, right? Um, new. Um, oh, and so, you know, so I'm just creating, you know, if you had examples, this, these are some examples from our week three here that you should have gone through in the week three zero one pointers, things like this. So creating um, a pointer variable X uh, and dynamically allocating it. So this is, this is um, as, as I think I discussed in my um, lecture videos this week, you know, this is created in a different place. This is created in, on what's known as the heap instead of being created on a stack, like, uh, like the local variable that I did, right? So when you do the new, it's created on the heap, and, and, and you know, basically it means that it has a global scope. So it doesn't get destroyed when you, um, when you leave this function. It doesn't get destroyed until you delete it. So you have to explicitly delete it. So you know, when, when you're working with pointer variables and you're dynamically allocating memory like this, you're responsible for managing the memory. So, so we've created some new memory and at some point we ought to delete it to um, uh, free that memory back up, right? But until we do that, um, it's actually still a valid variable. So, so, um, so yeah, it's, I, I can't return X because X is a pointer and I'm saying that I'm returning an integer, okay? So when you return a reference, you need to return the actual type of, of the variable. Um, and, and C++ handles behind the scenes doing the correct stuff to pass around addresses instead of making copies of the values, okay? So here, and so, since it's expecting an actual integer, if I dereference the pointer, I can use that anywhere I could use an actual integer. So now, uh, even though I still got um, a squiggly, um, it, uh, that, that should actually be correct. Um, that should go away once I compile here. My intel again, your IntelliSense sometimes takes a little bit of time to uh, re um, uh, to, to 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 see changes, right? So, so anyway, I think yeah, that compiles. Um, so I clean that. Let me actually build it. So, so yeah, that that compiled number one. Um, I mean, it's compiling the rest of the stuff now, but uh, but we did successfully compile this file in the examples. So let's call that. So this was called return reference example. Um, oops, <laughs> I cleaned that, I didn't mean to do that. Um, all right. Let's try calling that function. So, so what does it mean to return a reference? Well, so in this case, it doesn't give us a whole lot, you know, so, so this is more like a, a, a illustration for just, just an example here. So let's see, where's my main function here it is. Uh, I'll tack it on the end, I guess. Um, So in this case, the function doesn't take any parameters, but does return an integer. It turns a, returns a reference to an integer. So, um, so I, I can assign that. So basically, what will happen is, um, oh, I. Um, I set it to five in the same value. So let's, um, yeah, let's make it a different value so we can see that it changes. So, so my, my function is gonna 
create the new integer and return a reference to it for me. Um, and it sets the value to five. So after I return from that, I should expect it to um, Should expect it to have you know the value five here, right? So we'll see if that builds. So again, that built. Um, I, I accidentally cleaned again, so it's building everything again. But um, so it, it built successfully, um, and then let's run it by hand once we're done building everything again. I'm trying not to try not to clean again, so I'm not to rebuild everything. So, um, oops. So, so yeah, it has a value of five, okay? And um, so one kind of tricky thing of how we might uh, set that or how we might use that, um, I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, uh, here's an example. I think, I don't, I don't remember if it's, if it's next week's assignment, uh, but um, let's say you had, uh, we're, we're, turning, we're returning a reference to an integer here. Let's say we have an, an array. I'm just going to make it a global array here. Um, um, of like five integers. Um, So now instead of dynamically creating this, I'm going to just return uh, the value at index three of my array of this global array. So again, don't don't do don't make global stuff like I'm doing here. So you shouldn't shouldn't be doing stuff just for uh, an example. So we're actually returning. Um, uh, the 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 item in index three, which is the four here, that's, that's going to be confusing. Let's let's make these different values. We'll say uh, um, there one, ten, twenty. So uh, yeah, if we, if we return the one index three, that should be the 30 here, right? Um, so so this code should still compile. Um, so you know if, if we if, if we assign the reference that's returned into my integer, this is actually, after we do this, is now going to be a reference, you know, it's going to be pointing basically to that uh, location in the array that we have there, right? So, so it should print out as uh, whatever it was, uh, the, um, what, 30, right, um, after we do this. Right, the value is thirty, but now my integer is, is actually a reference. So you know, if I assign a value in there, it's it's it, you know it's, it's pointing to the same place as that location in the array. So um, I could make the value um, you know something else, like uh, uh, one hundred, let's say. But, um, you know, so, but if you display the array, so what did I call it? All right. 
I maybe I got the name wrong there, but um, let's see, what was that? That's right, my Ray. So, so uh, since we're all since we're all just working with the item at index three here, um, after I change it to a hundred, um, it should actually be changed. So again, it's kind of like working with a pointer. So now. Uh, after we've done this, since it returned a reference, uh, my integer is referring to the same memory as that my array at index three, right? Um, oh, and, and then my example didn't work though. So, um, so after we change it to 100, we're fine there. So yeah, so I thought that would work, but uh, I had to check that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, another thing that we can do, for example, so yeah, yeah, my array three is still 30 now, even after I was thinking it would get changed when we did that there, so. Um, but back to you, like uh, for not this week's assignment, but like uh, next week's assignment, um, kind of something that I know works that you can do, it's a bit tricky is um, if you're returning a reference, you can actually use that on the left-hand side of an assignment. So we're gonna be using that uh, maybe in the next assignment for things like, um, um, So that looks kind of strange, but since the, the function returns a reference, um, I can actually assign into that. So a reference is a, uh, what's known as a perfectly good L value, something that can be used on the left-hand side uh, so you can assign something into, right? So, um, so this time when I do that, it ought to change, even though it didn't do it there. So yeah, that, that, that worked that time. So I have to check this other thing. And I guess you work too, but um, maybe I'm forgetting something about what happened here after we returned the reference. So, but, but, um, but yeah, we'll kind of, we'll kind of use that in the, the next assignment or the assignment after that, so that we can make things that are kind of like um, indexing into an array. Um, so, so you'll see what I mean kind of later on. So, so anyway, uh, back to our assignment. Does that uh, prompt any questions from people? Um, so those were some of the things that people were struggling a little bit with uh, in the last two days that I saw. So yeah, like uh, in, in an assignment coming up, we're gonna be doing a similar thing to like the digit at place function where we access an item in a list and we give it like a, a, a an index, a location, but then we're going to return that as a reference so that we can actually use the function to modify our array uh, or, or the, our list um, at, you know, the, the value at particular locations in the, the list. So. All right, um, what else? What else can we mention here? Um, okay, somebody asked a question. Um, so the question was, do, do you have a certain style of int pointer um, uh, that you prefer? Yeah, so for style, um, yeah, I, I do prefer kind of the way that I showed it in the examples where you put the, the so if you're declaring a variable type int to, to put it next to the variable name, 
um, or a, a reference parameter uh, to put it again next to the, 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 the type, I should say, instead of the name, right? Kind of like we have here. Um, so, but yeah, if the style guideline isn't enforcing that, um, so I thought it was, but uh, but yeah, I could check it real quickly here. So so yeah, I mean, some people use it, even put it with space on both sides. Some people prefer it uh, there like that. I, I prefer it next to the type because to me that that's readable. That you know, it's a you're changing it from an integer to an integer pointer, or, or here we're changing it from a character to a character reference, right? Instead of having it next to the the name of your parameter, the name of your variable. So, uh, yeah. So I don't have that in the style. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, change that. Uh, I might. I might go back and put that so it's enforced by our style checker. But, uh, but yeah. So I've, I've been. You know, um, since it's not being forced by the style checker, you know, I'm, I won't say anything. But um, that's that is one thing that's easily that easily enforced by a style checker and most people set that so I just probably haven't set that yet um, but yeah if you're thinking about it um, you know um, I do have a preference that you, you put those next to the uh, the, the type uh, the name of the type for your variable declaration or parameter declaration or whatever so. uh, Had one person have a little bit of problems with the constructor. Um, so, I mean, just uh, to get it out on the video here, the, the constructor you're supposed to create, you know, is, is simpler than the one that I gave, but you can pretty much like, copy and paste this constructor. Uh, so, so what you're doing for the, the, the constructor that you, that you give is um, um, instead of passing in, um, an integer, and, and this code in here is mostly parsing out the digits one by one of this integer, so we can put it into our array of digits. But the, the constructor that you're supposed to create for step two here, you, you have to dynamically create an array of digits, um, um, although you're gonna be given the size. So, so yeah, your, your constructor, you're given um, a size and then an array of integers, right? So you don't have to do any calculation to figure out you know, how much memory or how, how big the array is that you're supposed to dynamically allocate. You'll, you'll be directly given that as one of the parameters. So you just need to allocate that array. And then you just need to copy the digits, uh, the, the correct ones from the array that's passed in as the second parameter into the, this digits member function array that you create. So, so you'll have a loop that's similar, but you don't have to do any of this stuff like, doing the mods and the divs and things. Uh, you should just be able to copy the digits directly from the, um, the second, from the array that's passed as a parameter into the, the digits array that you create dynamically. So. so then notice, um, you know, this is kind of some stuff that we talked about the week before about, uh, oh no, sorry, th this was this week, so uh, dynamic memory. So, so this is a, an example of, um, this is a very typical pattern um, for classes that dynamically create some memory. So the constructor always creates the memory dynamically using a, a call to new. Um, and then, so, so delete gets called on classes whenever the object goes out of scope. So whenever the object's being destroyed, and in there, that's where you have to call the, the corresponding delete. So to be a good manager of memory, every new has to have a corresponding delete. Um, and the basic pattern for classes that dynamically create their memory, that dynamically create some memory to use for something is you create it in the constructor once, and then the destructor um, is responsible for destroying that when, when the class goes out of scope or when the object instance is being destroyed and going out of scope. Um, which uh, reminds me of one thing that uh, back to the very first thing I started with. So the reason why you need um, max digits, the parameter to be an ampersand, just, just to kind of give it to you here. Um, so um, I see that I, I, 
probably should have fixed the function documentation here. So I should have made it clearer that this needs to be uh, a reference to a large integer object for um, for the first for the other large integer that pass in here. So. So this needs to be a reference to an other large integer object that we um, are to compare with this object. All right. And so the, the reason why, if you don't make, if you, if you make this a, a, a regular value parameter, so have a reference parameter, here's what happens. A copy of the object is made. So the, the, the copy of the large integer that you pass in um, and the original large integer from the, that you call this member function with, um, uh, there, there's two copies of them now, but both of them, you end up copying the, the array. But, but remember, uh, again, this is another thing that we talked about um, in our materials for the class this week. Uh, arrays are really just a, a pointer to a block of memory, right? So, so when you make this copy, if, if, you, if you pass this in by, that, by, um, by value, uh, it just makes a copy of the base address of the array. So both your copy and the original um, are pointing to the same array in memory. And so the problem happens is that when this function ends, it ends up destroying the copy of the object that's made. And that ends up calling your the destructor to delete your digits for this large integer that's passed in as a parameter, right? Which is what you don't want to be because you end up destroying the memory uh, since you've got two things pointing to the same digits array in memory, right? And that causes an issue. So if you make it a reference parameter, a, a copy is not made and, and the object doesn't go out of scope and get destroyed when the function is done. So, so that's why you kind of need it here. And for a similar reason, you also need it as a reference parameter for your add function as well. So, or else you'll have memory corruption issues when it, and when it um, incorrectly tries to delete some digits arrays um, for the, the copy of the object that's made. So. Uh, all right, yeah, I think that uh, that was most everything that I had people ask me questions about so far for today. So do be careful on your ad that you're that you're handling the, the carry correctly. So you have to add up the, the digits individually using some kind of a loop. We also have to kind of handle, you know, if, if it doesn't fit into a single single digit that you're carrying over the value and, and adding that into the next sum, right? So. Um, all right. Any any questions here about assignment three or pointers or stuff here? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. In that case, um, I mean, I'm probably gonna go ahead and wrap up. Um, so I give my haven't been giving myself enough time for the next class after that. But um, as usual, for you guys that are here or people that are watching this. Um, asynchronously um, the videos, I'll post the video. Hopefully I got the recording correct. Um, and, uh, you know, send email messages. Uh, as I've been asking people that have been emailing me, it's, it's best if you, for, for one thing, um, you know, screenshots aren't as helpful. So, so just copy and paste, you know, copy and paste the output from, you know, running your unit tests into an email. So, so that's, that's usually much more useful than a screen shot, especially copy and paste everything from the start of the command to, to the when it was done with the tests or whatever. But, but the other thing is also, you know, just feel free to, to go and send me your code. So, I mean, it's, it's, I've got things set up, you know, so I can just rel relatively quickly uh, plug that in and compile it and see 
what's going on. So uh, since everybody's using the same environment and same dev box and stuff. So or or yeah, do the the make submit and just send me the tar gzip file. That that works too. So either way. Um, all right. So that's it for today's session, and I will see you guys later then.